Hi everyone, my name is Tegan, and welcome back to Tell Me Writes. I've been reflecting on what I've read so far this year and I want to spend a little more time talking about my favourite reads of the year so far and collect those thoughts in one place. I think I did a video version of this last year for what I believe to be the best books of the year so far, but since then I've accepted that some of the books I love to read may not necessarily be the best of books. This list will be in no particular order, just vaguely chronological, so let's begin. Darling by Kay Ankrum. Kay Ankrum is truly just a once in a lifetime author to me. Her prose and craft are so unique and endearing, and every book by her feels like something that has done the irreversible damage to my brain chemistry. This one is a modern day thriller reimagining of Peter Pan with a very diverse cast in terms of race, sexuality, and disabilities, and it's potentially the best and most enthralling Peter Pan reimagining that I've read so far. This is a very unsettling and uncomfortable story about the vulnerability of minority kids who feel like they don't have a place to belong. Every single book by this author is a love letter to friendships and found families, but this book also explores the importance of safety and how hard it can be to recognise abuse, especially when it can be disguised as kindness when you're long to find a place to belong. It was an uncomfortable and thrilling read at times, but I was still completely swept away alongside Wendy. Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart. This is a book that I first picked up due to its comparisons to A Little Life in the sense that this is a story about suffering and dangerous loves and queerness. This didn't quite emotionally wreck me like A Little Life did, which left me feeling completely numb. This story left me feeling angry and provoked instead. I really enjoyed the structure of the book and how well Douglas navigates between two time frames, a backstory weaved among a presence in the lock and how they come together for a final chapter that is nothing less than devastating, but with a hint of hope. I am not ashamed to admit that I was on the verge of tears for many of the later chapters. This is undoubtedly a very raw story, one that is equal parts captivating and horrific, but I think it would take a certain kind of reader to see that kind of brutal honesty and value it. These Violent Delights by Mika Nimareva. This is a story of obsession, violence, intellect, passion and cruelty, and it consumed me entirely. I finished reading it months ago and still don't have the words for review. It's a slowly intoxicating book of violence and mental illness and subtle cruelty and consuming obsessive love. It's a mess and it's so beautifully written. And I am perpetually devastated that this author doesn't have any other books released at the moment. The prose is incredible. The absolute phenomenal level of detail that just made each scene alive. It made the book slow and thoughtful, but in the best way. You aren't just viewing the world like the character would, you are so deep in his mind. The way his sensory overload seeps through the pages, I felt every word of it. Green Glass House by Kate Milford. There was never any question in my mind that this would turn out to be one of my favourite middle grade books of all time. It's not that the book is atmospheric, it is, and strongly so, and it's not that the characters are immediately and intensely engaging. They are, and without stretching or warping. And it's not the flirtation with archetype, pastiche and homage in the setup with smugglers, custom agents and the company town. Though it does a fantastic job of both presenting them and reining them into a story you can lose yourself in. The power of this book is Milo. Behind all the clues and ghost stories and thefts and lies, what Green Glass House really is, is a story of a hero's journey. Milo starts out as a soft-spoken kid with little faith in his own abilities. Donning the mantle of a kind of Dungeons and Dragons type character, he taps into a strength that he might otherwise not even known he had. Milo's slow awakening to his own strengths and abilities is the heart of the novel. For all that people will discuss the mystery and the clues, it's Milo that holds everything together. The Spirit Bears at Teeth by Andrew Joseph White. This is a book about misogyny, transphobia and ableism from the perspective of an autistic transgender boy. It has a thematic focus on the violent enforcement of gender roles and the Victorian era psychiatry as tools of oppression. The book means more to me than I can articulate, but be aware that this is not a fun or easy read. To see a trans main character with a brain like mine that gets overwhelmed and cries and apologises over and over, who doesn't really get people or what they try to say, who moves through the world so similarly to the way I do is something I'm going to hold close. To read a book so darkly horrific, so brutally brilliant, and to point at the main character and go, hey, that's me, to deeply understand their reactions and actions is so incredibly special and rare to find. So those are my favourite reads of the year so far. If you've read any of these and have opinions, or if you want to gush about your own favourite reads, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, bye.